Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video, I just wanted to talk about the subject of lesbian erasure. Oh, I'm watching you. The subject of lesbian erasure is an important topic which we need to have a conversation about because it has negatively impacted lesbians all throughout history and continues to do so today. So what is lesbian erasure? Well, to be succinct, it's the absence, distortion, and removal of lesbians and lesbianism in history, academia, media, the arts, and even in the LGBT community. This absence and distortion of lesbianism throughout history has meant that prejudice, misrepresentation, and heteronormativity has taken precedence in society, leaving the lesbian community misrepresented, ostracised, and vilified. Lesbian erasure is not only a result of the active removal of lesbian visibility by a wider heteronormative society, it can also be self-imposed, with lesbian and queer women erasing their own sexuality and identity to avoid tension or for fear of repercussions pertaining to their sexuality and identity. Whether erasure is opposed upon lesbians by wider society or self-imposed by themselves, it has created a noticeable absence of lesbian perspective and visibility throughout history to the present day. In particular, there is a noticeable amount of lesbian erasure in historical records, and Laura Cottingham describes in her work, Notes on Lesbian, how difficult it is to construct any kind of lesbian history where when there is such an absence of primary sources due to active erasure and censorship of lesbianism. Cottingham also suggests that there are likely quite a few primary sources out there pertaining to lesbianism that we currently don't have access to. This is due to diminished interest, self-imposed lesbian erasure, or tensions surrounding a possible lesbian revelation of a subject. However, potential sources could be exposed in the future due to changing attitudes towards lesbianism, meaning that we may discover more about lesbian history over time. Cottingham says, An attempt to construct a lesbian history, whether it be sociological or art historical, involves confronting silence, erasure, misrepresentation, and prejudice, all of which present formidable obstacles to historical research and writing. How is it possible to reconstruct a story from evidence that is partial, absent, hidden, denied, obfuscated, trivialized, and otherwise suppressed? The traditional methodology of historical research and, by extension, the value system used to evaluate the quality of texts written in the name of history is necessarily overdetermined by a prioritization of primary sources. But what if these primary sources do not exist because governments have not counted or otherwise documented the historical subjects? or because the social and political persecution of said subjects has encouraged them to silence themselves, or because prejudice has enabled families and biographers to destroy documents such as letters and diaries that contain the crucial content that might constitute testimony or evidence. Some lesbian historians understandably believe that more information about lesbians in the past exists than we now know of or have access to, and that therefore, more primary sources and more traditional history is forthcoming. Cottingham then goes on to describe some of the reasons that lesbian erasure has been so prevalent throughout history, such as the distortion of the lesbian identity, heteronormativity, self-imposed lesbian erasure, and residing under a patriarchal structure which erases and diminishes women. Cottingham says, Writing the history of women is difficult because in a patriarchal society, fewer sources concerning women exist and those that do have often been ignored as unimportant or have been altered. The task of the feminist historian is first to rescue women from oblivion, and then to interpret women's experience within the context of the society of the time. This is also true for the lesbian historian. In her case, however, the problem of sources is magnified a thousandfold. First, there is relatively little explicit information about lesbian lives in the past, though probably much more than we know about at the moment. Second, much important material has been suppressed as irrelevant, or its significance overlooked by scholars pursuing a different theory. Material may have been omitted as private, or likely to embarrass the family or alienate the reader. Much of the evidence we do have has been distorted by historians who willfully, or through ignorance, have turned lesbian lives into normal 
heterosexual ones. Women can be ignored, but lesbians must be expunged. Lesbians do not usually leave records of their lives. Those who do may not include any details which would identify them as unmistakably lesbians. So, from Cottingham's work, we begin to get a good idea of what lesbian erasure is and why it has been so prevalent throughout history. Which leads me to... So why is lesbian erasure a thing? Lesbian erasure really exists for two reasons. The first being that throughout history, we have resided under a patriarchal structure which prioritizes and focuses on men. This has resulted in the diminishment and erasure of women and consequently lesbians throughout history to the present day. Because historically, men have dominated the spheres of artistic production, law, media, and the medical field, most of history has been recorded through a male lens, and this includes lesbianism. This has resulted in the distortion of identity. If lesbianism was ever exposed through an artistic medium or media outlet, it would typically fall into the categories of hypersexualization, abnormality, or immorality, and so lesbians came to be associated with these themes. These negative connotations surrounding lesbians were persistent until the mid to late 20th century here in the West, and it was because around this time, gay and lesbian populations began to have a voice and a visible presence. The mid to late 20th century very much marked the beginning of huge changes for the gay and lesbian communities. The second reason for the prevalence of lesbian erasure is the way homosexuality has been perceived throughout most of history. In terms of the West, homosexuality has long been declared as immoral by the church and later on thought of as a medical disorder and unhealthy abnormality. This kept lesbian and queer women in a position where, if they chose to be visible, they would open themselves up to a level of prejudice and misunderstanding directed at them. This societal hostility towards homosexuality causes many lesbians to erase their own sexuality to avoid causing tension or putting themselves in a position where they might be harmed. Furthermore, lesbians may choose to erase their lesbianism to not only protect themselves, but protect their public image, family name, or business. Before the 20th century, if there happened to be rare substantial evidence of possible lesbian relationships, these relationships were largely ignored, distorted, or erased from the public view altogether. So even when lesbian erasure is not self-imposed by lesbian or queer women, and evidence which points to lesbianism exists, lesbian erasure may be imposed by relatives or friends in a bid to protect a business or the family name. Even in the late 20th century, where lesbian visibility was improving, this active attempt at erasing lesbianism continued, and a good example of this is the reaction to the novel The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. Laura Cottingham includes an extract in her work, Notes on Lesbian, describing the active lesbian erasure surrounding The Colour Purple. Cottingham says, Even when lesbianism is consciously and obviously enunciated in textual and visual representation, readers and viewers and critics often remain determined to ignore it. An example given in Barbara Smith's Introduction to Homegirls, a black feminist anthology, should be familiar to most American readers of this essay, as it concerns the 1982 winner of both the Pulitzer Prize in Fiction and the American Book Award for what became a 1985 Hollywood feature that garnered Academy Award nominations across the board, Alice Walker's The Colour Purple. In her examination of the forces that keep lesbianism, and most especially black lesbianism, unmentionable, Smith writes, Alice Walker's novel, The Colour Purple, is a marvel because it so clearly depicts the origins of, of contemporary black feminism in the lives of our mothers, in this case, of poor women living in the rural South. It also represents a breakthrough in both the context of trade publishing and black literature because of its original and positive portrayal of a black lesbian relationship. Not surprisingly, in the unanimously positive reviews of The Colour Purple, black and white critics have steadfastly refused even to mention the true subject of the book. So, from this extract pertaining to the reception of the novel The Colour Purple, we can observe just how prevalent and multifaceted lesbian erasure is, and how it has persisted throughout history time and time again. The Secret Language
Despite there being a history of censorship and backlash against lesbian productions or expression portraying any kind of positive representation, lesbian and queer creators still found a way to express their identity and loves in secrecy. Anne Lister famously recorded her love life in a coded diary, the contents of which would not be exposed until the 20th century, long after her death. Another example of this is Portrait of a Marriage, a book released in the late 20th century which contains Vita Sackville West's autobiography, in which she talks about her love affair with Violet Trefusis, which took place in the early 20th century. In fact, in the early 20th century, sapphic literary productions were being produced, but they would often be coded, or the gender would be swapped to portray lesbian relationships as heteronormative, and this was to get past censorship. For example, works like Orlando by Virginia Woolf and Challenge by Vita Sackville West were inspired by and actually about lesbian romances. Yet the literary productions themselves played into heteronormativity so they could be publicly distributed and supported by publishers. If lesbian and queer women were bold enough to write their truth overtly or dare to portray lesbianism in any kind of positive or sympathetic light before the mid to late 20th century, they would be met with sense the Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall is a prominent example of this. A lesbian novel which was released in 1928 and subsequently banned due to its very mild but obvious portrayal of lesbianism. Fast forward to the mid 20th century, it was still a huge risk to create lesbian content which offered positive representation. Desert of the Heart by Jane Rule is one example of this. Jane Rule nearly lost her job as a professor for publishing the novel, and the author of The Price of Salt, Patricia Highsmith, originally published The Price of Salt under a different name to avoid any repercussions for writing a lesbian novel with a promising ending. So, we can observe throughout history how difficult it is for lesbians to get out of this cycle of erasing their lesbian identity to stay safe versus daring to be visible and weathering the consequences. This has resulted in a secret language which enabled lesbians to have some form of expression whilst remaining secure. Keeping a lesbian or queer sexuality invisible was and is a means of security for women. But of course, all the time that lesbians remained invisible meant there were less people to challenge the prejudices and hypersexualization that was and is projected onto lesbians. And this brings me on to why is lesbian visibility important? As I touched upon earlier, everything changed for lesbian and gay communities after the late 20th century and this was largely because of lesbian and gay activism and visibility. Once society was exposed to lesbian and gay communities and their voices, these communities were slowly humanized paving the way for lesbian and gay rights and more positive representation. Overall, when you erase lesbians from society and make sure any exposure of it is associated with negative connotations, you create an environment in which only heterosexuality is socially acceptable and accessible, placing pressure on women to conform to heteronormative relationships and experiences or face hostility and ostracization. This plays a huge part in lesbian erasure and is incredibly damaging to lesbian and queer women. In their work, Death, Suicide and Modern Homosexual Culture, The Hirschfeld Archives, Violence, Death and Modern Queer Culture, Heike Bauer expounds upon this idea of heteronormativity being made compulsory for women through lesbian erasure. Bauer says, Adrian Rich has argued that the destruction of records and memorabilia and letters documenting the realities of lesbian existence must be taken very seriously seriously as a means of keeping heterosexuality compulsory for women, since what has been kept from our knowledge is joy, sexuality, courage and community, as well as guilt, self-betrayal and pain. Bauer goes on to highlight the link between lesbian and gay suicide and social rejection and persecution. Bauer says, An analysis of Hirschfeld's death narratives help make visible the social norms that prompted many women and men to end their life because of the sense that their homosexual feelings and desires fundamentally denied their existence. These writings thus provide vital insights into the damaging terms that governed queer reality in the early 20th century, revealing the powerful impact homosexual persecution and social rejection had on individual lives and collective existence at the time. They show that homosexual culture 
culture formed not just around political protest and affirmative cultural representations, but also around injury, hurt and death. Kathleen Irwin reveals these statistics of lesbian and gay suicide in their work interpreting the evidence, competing paradigms, and the emergence of lesbian and gay suicide as a social fact. Irwin says, Bell and Weinberg found that significantly higher percentages of gays than heterosexuals had attempted or seriously considered suicide. The figures were consistent across race and gender. 37% of white gay men compared to 13% of white heterosexual men 24% of black gay men compared to 2% of black heterosexual men, 41% of white lesbians compared to 26% of white heterosexual women, and 25% of black lesbians compared to 19% of black heterosexual women. Whilst this particular source is from 1993, we can still very much see a significantly higher suicide rate from lesbian and gay populations in recent years from both academic research and more accessible data via internet search engines. Lesbian visibility and exposure is important because when lesbians feel like an accepted and visible part of society, when we are free to live our lives and love who we want in the same way heterosexual people do, we are ultimately happier and healthier for it. So as we can see, lesbian erasure is a vicious cycle which we're only really just beginning to break free of. We can also see how lesbian visibility challenges negative notions which are projected onto lesbians, and this results in positive change. When lesbians consume healthy, authentic representation and role models in the media, it gives them hope and a sense of belonging. Human beings need that hope and they need that connection because without it, life can be a very dark place. So the more visibility and understanding that lesbians have, the brighter things will be for them. Okay guys, thanks for coming to my TED talk on lesbian erasure, just as a little Side note, there's a little peasant tip jar down in the description box, which, you know, you can feel free to leave me a tip if you like, and um, I will spend it on tea, which helps keep me alive and fuels my lesbian research. It, it does. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.